But in today's video, we will look at a case where 115 people vanished into thin air. In August 1587, approximately 115 English settlers arrived on Roanoke Island, off the coast of what is now North Carolina, marking the beginning of one of America's first unresolved mysteries. Two years after a first disastrous attempt to colonize Roanoke, these colonists intended to establish the first permanent English outpost in the New World. Later that year, John White, the new colony's administrator, would return to England to stock up on fresh supplies. As he arrived, however, a significant naval conflict broke out between England and Spain, and Queen Elizabeth I ordered all available ships into battle against the formidable Spanish Armada. White returned to Roanoke in August 1590, three years after leaving his wife and daughter, his infant granddaughter, Virginia Dare, who was the first English child born in the Americas, and the other settlers. He discovered no traces of the colony or its inhabitants, and few clues as to what may have occurred, except for a single word, Croatoan, inscribed into a wooden post, and Crow etched into a tree. Due to the absence of concrete evidence and the presence of enigmatic clues, the abandoned settlement is the subject of wild speculation and theories. It comes as no surprise that theories on the disappearance of 115 people can range from plausible to absolutely wacky. The colonists were eaten. Although there is evidence of cordial relations with some tribes in the area, some Native American tribes may have been hostile to the Roanoke colonists. There is a theory that a cannibalistic tribe could have attacked and eaten the British colonists. If accurate, this would explain why no corpses or skeletal remains have ever been recovered. Bone powder was a common constituent in the medicinal remedies of numerous indigenous cultures. Although it is a time-consuming task, they would have had ample time to complete it, as White was absent for three years, and it is impossible to pinpoint when the settlers vanished. There is no conclusive evidence that any local communities practiced cannibalism, but there is evidence that Jamestown colonists engaged in cannibalism in 1609. After multiple unsuccessful harvests, it is conceivable that the colonists in Roanoke succumbed to consuming human flesh as well. The colonists were massacred by Chief Powhatan. In 1607, colonists from the Jamestown colony tried to find out what became of their unfortunate predecessors. Secretary William Strachey of Jamestown asserted that the Native American Chief Powhatan, Pocahontas's father, confessed to leader John Smith that his tribe massacred the colony as retribution for allying with a rival tribe. Powhatan allegedly acquired a musket barrel, brass mortar, and pestle that he had stolen from the colonists. However, historians and anthropologists dispute this account, as Strachey is the only source for this confession. Smith did not mention it in any of his writings. A contagious illness drove the colonists insane. Native American communities asserted that they witnessed internal conflict among the colonists of Roanoke. Based on this evidence, some archaeologists hypothesize that the Roanoke colonists contracted a plague. Those infected with the disease may have experienced delirium, paranoia, or even complete lunacy. Those who were not afflicted would have killed those who were for fear of contracting the infection. Spanish troops murdered the colonists. Some believe the Spanish were involved in the disappearance of the Roanoke colonists, given that England was at war with Spain at the time of the colony's disappearance. Among other things, Spain and England were at odds over the colonization of the Americas, and Spanish troops were stationed in Florida at the time. The colonists were sabotaged as part of a plan to discredit Sir Walter Raleigh. 
Lee Miller, an anthropologist, believes the colonists were victims of a conspiracy hatched by Sir Francis Walsingham, the Secretary of State for England under Queen Elizabeth I. Miller theorizes in her book, Roanoke, Solving the Mystery of the Lost Colony, that Walsingham intentionally abandoned the colonists and left them to die because Sir Walter Raleigh, who funded the Roanoke expedition, was granted a royal patent for all the land he settled in North America. According to the theory, the colonists moved west into North Carolina, where they became embroiled in a conflict between native nations at war. They were either captured or executed. All of this would have been kept confidential by the Crown, which explains why there are no records. And here comes the wacky. Zombies. According to a theory that some internet users enjoy spreading, Roanoke was allegedly the epicenter of a zombie apocalypse. This theory incorporates aspects of other hypotheses that the colonists became cannibals due to disease. According to this hypothesis, the colonizers were infected with a zombie virus that gave them an insatiable appetite for human flesh and accelerated their decomposition after their human food source was depleted. Before White's return, the remains would have been long gone and the infestation would have ended. The paranormal theories do not end with zombies. The Croatans believe that greater spirits manifested in the form of the elements, and they reported a peculiar occurrence that coincided with the disappearance of the colonists. In the area where the indigenous people hunted, a considerable number of birds and other animals suddenly died. The Croatans spoke of a malicious entity that assumed the appearance of a reptile. They claimed it could attach itself to humans, causing them to exhibit demonic characteristics such as violence and greed. The Croatans forewarned the colonists that the evil reptilian spirit was infecting the entire region. When the colonists started fighting amongst themselves, they realized that the settlers were infected with the creature's evil and the colony was doomed. The disappearance of the Roanoke colony is not the only aspect of this enigma. Archaeologists and historians are still trying to determine why Croatoan was inscribed into that post. The word Croatoan is surprisingly associated with a strange event a few centuries later. The untimely passing of author Edgar Allan Poe in 1849 is poorly understood. After going missing during his journey from Virginia to Pennsylvania, he was discovered in a Baltimore gutter, barely conscious and muttering incoherently. On his deathbed, Poe whispered the word Croatoan. It is unclear what medical condition he had, and his official cause of death is also in doubt. All medical records and his death certificate were lost. Could he have had the same experience as the vanished colony? This enigmatic word has also appeared in other mysteries. Before his 1888 release, infamous stagecoach bandit Black Bart allegedly carved the word into the wall of his prison cell, was released and was never seen again. The writer Ambrose Bierce disappeared in Mexico in 1913, and the post of the bed he slept in allegedly bore the word Croatoan etched into it. The word also appears on the final page of the logbook of the ghost ship Carol A. Deering, which ran aground in 1921 near what was formerly known as Croatoan Island near Cape Hatteras. Amelia Earhart allegedly scribbled the word in her journal, discovered after her 1937 disappearance. Contrary to popular opinion, some experts believe that the colonists left some evidence behind before they disappeared. The Dare Stones are a collection of 48 stones carved with inscriptions purportedly written by the survivors of the Roanoke colony. The rocks, which were discovered between 1937 and 1940, recount a dramatic tale. Except for the first stone found, it has been determined that most of the stones are hoaxes. This stone, known as the Chowan River Stone, may have been engraved during the colonial period. 
In the summer of 1937, a California tourist named Louis Hammond discovered the first stone. Hammond took the stone to Emory University in Atlanta, claiming he discovered the 21-pound stone while searching for hickory nuts along a recently opened stretch of Highway 17 near Edenton, North Carolina. The carved initials are believed to belong to Eleanor White Dare, daughter of the colony's governor John White, and mother of Virginia Dare. In April 1941, the Saturday Evening Post published an article condemning the Dare Stones as forgeries, citing anachronistic language and a consistency of spelling that was unprecedented at the time. After this, the Dare Stones ended up in a basement at Brunau University, a disgrace for the academics involved. However, scholarly attention is occasionally turned to the Chowan River Stone, the original Dare Stone discovered by Hammond. It is made of a different rock than the others, a bright white quartzite interior and dark exterior would have made an excellent choice for Eleanor Dare's letter to her father. And in the 1930s, the patina on the stone would have been difficult to chemically replicate. In addition, it lacks the anachronistic language of the other stones. According to some experts, the only possible anomaly is Eleanor Dare's signature, which includes the initials EWD, which was not typical in the 16th century. Innovative technologies in Elizabethan epigraphy, chemical analysis, and other ancient rock inscriptions may shed light on this mysterious stone and its inscriptions, even though many experts disregard the Chowan River Stone as an apparent fake. What most likely happened to the colonists in Roanoke is not as sensational as all the theories. What unfolded at Roanoke has perplexed historians for centuries. The missing settlers left behind only the two clues mentioned earlier, the word Croatoan carved into a fort's gatepost and crow etched into the tree. Originally, Hatteras Island was known as Croatoan. Consequently, this discovery prompted a widespread theory that the English settlers had abandoned the colony for the island. Now the excavation work of archaeologist Scott Dawson has potentially proven this to be true. Scott Dawson is uniquely qualified to investigate what happened at the Roanoke colony. In addition to being an island native with family origins dating back to the 1600s, he is also an experienced archaeologist and the president of the Croatoan Archaeological Society, an organization dedicated to the historical event. The author of The Lost Colony and Hatteras Island argues in his book that the lost colony was never lost. In 2009, professional archaeologists and local volunteers began excavations on Hatteras Island. A few years later, in 2013, scientists began to find evidence that supported their theory. Copper rings, sword handles, earrings, writing slates and glass dating to the 16th century and originating in England were discovered. Dawson pointed out, As much as I believed the colony went down to Hatteras, I never actually thought we were going to find it. I can't believe we found what we found. It's kind of surreal. Professor Mark Horton, who assisted Dawson with the excavations, explained that the Roanoke Enigma was the result of natural human dispersal. When these colonies become abandoned, you get massive political eruptions and disagreements and people walking out and things, he said. So, it's not unlikely that one group might have gone up the Chesapeake, up the Albanal. But I'm pretty confident one group at least, probably the pretty substantial part, came out to Hatteras Island. Researchers believe they located the survivor camp on Hatteras, where the colonists lived before assimilating with the Croatans. According to Horton, these Native Americans were friendly. It was a good place with one's allies in a place where you could potentially be rescued. We not only found evidence of mixed architecture of houses, but also metallurgy, where they had blacksmith shops and were also working in copper and lead, and this continued right on into the 1600s, Dawson has said. It's hard to say how many, 
but a few dozen at least lived for a few decades down there in the villages and continued to work in metals. They discovered several gun parts, which the stranded settlers combined with sections from other firearms because they could not obtain replacements. Earrings and wires were repurposed as fish hooks, along with numerous other objects that were repurposed for more practical purposes. Before John White even left the colony, they were already hand and glove with the Crotones anyhow, said Dawson. So when he told them to write down where they were going, and he saw that message three years later, he didn't say, oh my god, what does this word mean? He knew exactly where that was and why they were there, and he said so. Despite this clear sign, it would take archaeologists over 400 years to confidently trace the Roanoke colonists back to Hatteras Island. There are numerous mysteries and inexplicable occurrences in American history annuals. From ancient times to the present, mysteries persist, crimes are never solved, cryptozoological creatures skulk in forests and lakes, and people go missing. They are never found, the government is suspected of covering up their existence, and accepted written history is frequently called into question. Undoubtedly, some mysteries will never be solved, while others inspire new generations with advanced technologies to seek answers, and still others remain the subject of heated debates. It seems that for now, the mystery of Roanoke has been saved by good old archaeology. If you love our content and want to support the channel, feel free to check our web shop where you can find exclusive true crime merch brought to you by Bad Things.